Welcome to video 24 on fun with Arduino. In our previous video we created a step sequencer for addressable LEDs or NeoPixels and we, that sequencer was quite convenient to control the LEDs that you may have in your houses of a small village on your model railway layout. And the ease of operation was that you only had to fill in a series of zeros and ones to tell when the light switches on and off. Uh, and while that is quite convenient, it also is a little bit uh, rigid because the interval time is fixed. If you have put it on 10 seconds, you can never uh, yeah, put lights on or off in between that time. And also the color per LED is fixed. And there is another way to create a step sequencer which is much more flexible. We can uh, tell it exactly at what millisecond we want to turn an LED on or off. And also we can change the colors and even the same LED at one moment in time can have uh, this color and at another moment in time can have another color if, if that would ever be necessary. So let's have a look how we can make a little bit more flexible step sequencer. This is the code for a flexible step sequencer. At the top, as usual, we start with a couple of defines. The number of steps in this case is 8. The number of LEDs is 8. And the data pin for the uh, NeoPixel string is 5. Then we have a counter for the steps. Uh, I would have liked to use the word step, but look what happens if I do that. That becomes a colored word. That means this is a reserved word for the Arduino software. And it's never a good idea to have a variable name that is a reserved word. That can uh, confuse the system, so let's abbreviate it. And then we have the unsigned long time for action. Then a uh, structure is defined. It has a strange name, but that's just an abbreviation of LED, red, green, blue, and time. And inside that structure, we define four bytes called LED and RGB. And we define one unsigned long called the step time. Once this structure is defined, we can use it. So here we uh, specify uh, an instance of that structure called sequencer, well abbreviated, with the array, it's an array in itself, with the number of steps as the maximum. And then immediately we start to load this array with the steps we like to have. And every step is now quite simple. We have first the number of the LED we want to uh, have some action on. And then we have the RGB color value. So this LED is now apparently going to be switched on with this color. And after this amount of milliseconds, we go to the next step where apparently we are going to switch LED number four to this color. And then again, this amount of milliseconds, we start to operate LED number two and it gets this color and so on and so on until we have specified all eight steps. Uh, the final step uh, uh, for just for fun LED6 is not going to be switched fully off. It stays on a very low light level and then we have uh, night period. The, the, this it was the lighting for four houses in a small village on a model railway layout. So they switch on in a certain sequence and then they switch off in a certain sequence. And because the milliseconds can be uh, yeah, exactly specified, we got rid of the quite rigid step sequencing of the previous video. We are quite more flexible with the timing now. And also we can give it different colors and we don't even have to uh, give one LED one color. One LED can have in uh, different moments in time different colors. So this sequencer is more flexible. Of course then we have to include the NeoPixel library again, just like in the previous video. Then we 
create an instance of that uh, uh, Ada fruit NeoPixel and I gave it the name NeoPixel but that's just a name you can give it any name you like we specify here the number of LEDs in the NeoPixel string we specify what pin the data line is connected to and these two are uh, different per uh, type of NeoPixel that you have bought but luckily with me the standard default values worked fine. In the setup we begin the NeoPixel we have a for loop that puts every NeoPixel LED to 000, 000, 000 so switching them off and the final statement here is to show that, to send that data to the NeoPixel. That's all in the setup, so we just switch all the LEDs off. And then in the loop, uh, yeah, a very short loop, if it is time for action, then we switch the NeoPixel on or off according to our step sequencer. And that is over here. First, uh, which LED are we going to treat? And then here is the RGB color. So uh, we just uh, act on what is in our structure, what we just defined. And then uh, we tell the NeoPixel show command to send this data to the pixels. And then we increase our time for action again with the value that came out of our step sequencer. So this is it. Oh yeah, of course we have to increase our step counter now and if it has reached the number of steps it resets to zero. That is this percentage modulo operator. This is all, just 42 lines of code. Yeah, uh, I have no on-off switches or state transition diagram that would make the code a little bit longer but not even that much. So very short piece of code. Let's try it out. Uh, well, uh, uh, I've just uploaded it and here is the video that shows that indeed the lights in the four houses switch on with different colors and different, uh, how, how to say, uh, brightnesses and different timing. So that's all quite okay. However, uh, we are now flexible with the timing, but this sequence stays the same every time, uh, day and night. Uh, there is no, no randomness. So the next challenge is to add a little bit of randomness. And we have seen before, we have even used it before, the random statement that is available. So let's do that. To make our steps more random we are just going to add a random time and to do that we first define the minimum for that. I have put it on 100 milliseconds and we also define a maximum time to add which I here specified as one and a half second. Of course you can fill in your own numbers there. Then uh, not much has changed here, but for the sequence itself, we use the same uh, LED numbers and the same colors, but different times. I have put here uh, three times zero milliseconds because uh, we were going to add a random time uh, that are, are we, we are going to do that later in the loop. Only when all the lights are on, so it's evening now, between uh, the, the, the evening and the time to go to bed I added uh, some time over here. Then all the lights start to switch off. They do that again at random times but then it is night and to have that night I added some time here in my step. Uh, so that's that and not, the code has not changed at all but for this one line where we are going to create the new time for action which is the current clock plus our uh, step time that we defined in the sequencer plus and this is the new uh, the only new uh, uh, statement the random between minimum and maximum that we defined that's all and now let me switch on this uh, this video over here 
and then we can see that indeed the lights now switch on in a more random pattern and also they switch off in a random pattern and every time that cycle runs that pattern is different so that makes it a bit more realistic so to speak okay let's do one more uh, yeah here we have the final sequence and again a different pattern than the one before so this is this is quite realistic for houses of course with this oh let me put off the video of course this new sequencer still is capable of creating uh, flashing lights for maybe police cars it's just a matter of filling in your table with steps over here uh, there is an example of two flash lights one is red and one is blue and they are on and off for 100 milliseconds and it's eight lines of, uh, of, of specification for the steps and then you have two blinking LEDs let me switch on the video so we can see that that really works well yeah it does uh, there's not much to uh, to tell about it any more than this uh, it's just another sequencer the previous one had uh, the, the convenience of the zeros and ones to define the steps but it has a rigid timing and fixed colors this other step sequencer has total flexible times maybe even random times and also flexible colors well, right, this is it for this video. The next video, we are going to have a look at a rotary encoder because they are quite convenient to use for all kinds of applications. And the application that we are going to use it for is to tune our servo motor. Whenever you use a servo motor somewhere to, to uh, operate something, to move something, you need to tune the right angles. And to find the right angles, we are going to use the rotary encoder. Maybe see you back there. Bye bye.